Whoa. Oh, here we go. We're okay. in. Okay. Hello. Good evening. Hi, everyone. Um, <laughs> right. So I uh, had a slight false start there. So I'm not quite sure what happened. Hopefully now we are all operational. Okay. So uh, my little count at the top is telling me that we have got nine attendees, which is fantastic. Welcome all of you. Um, obviously, we would love to be doing this, actually seeing you in person, um, showing you around the labs. Um, but um, uh, <laughs> COVID. Um, so um, I'm not actually uh, in the college. Um, I am self-isolating um, due to COVID. Um, so let me introduce myself. I am Brendan Foster. I'm one half of the physics team. And um, yeah, um, as I said, we really wish we could be doing this in, in person, but welcome to all of you. So I'm going to be running the Q and A in the chat. Okay, so if you do have any questions, please, please, please do put them um, up, and I shall answer them for you. Okay, so I shall um, send you across to um, uh, to to Rick Homer now, who will introduce himself. He's the other half of the physics team. Okay, am I live? You're now live, Rick. Hello, UK. Um, hi, guys. Uh, my name's Rick Homer. Uh, I'm the uh, other part of a two-teacher uh, department, Solid Hall Sixth Form, um, and we are we are very, very passionate, as Brennan said, and very energetic about our physics. Um, and uh, we are both done physics degrees, so we are specialists uh, in this area, in this subject. We're also specialists in what on earth you do with the subject, and when you uh, when you leave after year 13. We're also specialists in which university and which job you you could get by doing um, a physics A level. OK, so uh, if we can go back to our slides, please, uh, Brendan. And there we go. Great. So, yeah, it's going to be about 30 minutes approx approximately. Um, we, we're going to just give you a little bit of a a, a taster, a taster of of what we do here. Um, the the questions I want you to do is to is to type your questions as I'm speaking. Type them. Brendan will uh, answer them. Uh, and basically, uh, you, you know, I will maybe if I get a chance, I might answer a few at the end if we have enough time. Okay. But please uh, ask the questions you can. Okay. Um, and uh, OK, so uh, just have a look at the year 12 course. So we start with Newtonian mechanics. Um, this is fundamental, everyone, because Newtonian mechanics is in all parts of physics topics. And so we do seven weeks of Newtonian mechanics right from vectors through to momentum, through to energy. And we cover the detail, we cover the diagrams. We basically give you the trigonometry and the maths that goes with it as well. And it basically we build up that fundamental knowledge um, we then go into material, the material science, which are springs and young modulus. So that is talking about how uh, when you stretch a material, what are the properties? We then start to give you an inkling into the careers and the engineering side of physics, where we talk about material science and how is it used in, you know, cable, uh, lift cables and crane cables. And we basically tie that together to what we're doing. We do some um, very good experiments as well, which will give you an idea of what a Young's modulus is by stretching uh, a piece of copper and we use techniques that are very accurate. OK, DC electricity. We reteach this because uh, from your you would have given the introduction in your lower school, but we, we reteach the distribution of energy and the fact that the battery has to provide the same amount of energy to all the components. Um, we basically model it. We model it with demonstrations. And so you can see visually what is happening with the circuit and where what a potential difference actually is. And, you know, the amount of charge per second, that's a current. And we take your um, what you know already and we reteach you um, with an A-level spec and it also just gives you a, a, a leaning towards the university. Now, waves, we hit a yet another fundamental. I mean, waves are not just air waves and water waves. <clears throat> 
they are electromagnetic waves. So all of that radiation is basically part of, it's a fundamental part of physics. And um, we will talk about refraction, diffraction through very, very small gaps and refraction through glass. And we go through the whole of that. We also look at optical fibers and the uses of it. Um, then we tease you a little bit with quantum physics. So we look at wave particle duality and the photoelectric effect. And we mention Einstein an awful lot in this. Um, we then go on to particle physics. And this is where AQA, I think, were very um, forward thinking because they give you an introduction. We give you an introduction to particle physics. So it might tempt you to go, I want to go beyond this. We also, I will mention later, have a visiting professor who works at the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva. So he will talk about what you have learned, and that's part of year 12. OK, now 13, thermal, this is gases. And you would have done a little bit of this in GCSE, but we take that even further. We take you into 3D modeling of, of kinetic theory. So you look at a particle in three dimensions, speeds in three dimensions. Further mechanics, we have, we look at simple harmonic motion, a fundamental motion of atoms, but actually we look at pendulums, circular motion, the link from circles to simple harmonic, and we, and we tie them together with some beautiful maths, and we look at differentiation, even though we're not actually supposed to, and it means it puts a meaning to differentiation when you do maths with us. Fields. Um, meant to be slightly rigorous academically. I think if you've done the work we want you to, you will be able to deal with that gravitational fields and the visual aspect of gravitational and electric, they're very similar to each other. Um, electric fields basically link into capacitors. So capacitors use electric fields. And then my favorite of all, this started me when I was six years old. Um, my mum bought me a small a book on magnets and motors and magnetic fields and electromagnetic induction. We introduce you to Faraday's law, the mass that goes with it, but basically where does our electricity come from now, nowadays? How magnets can turn particles in hadron colliders and how they can move them in circles. Then the, uh, the physics we do as an option is astrophysics. So with seven sections of astrophysics that we look at, and we again, it's an introduction, but we make sure that you come out of it knowing what's inside a refracting telescope and a, and a radio telescope. But we look at the classification of stars through their wavelengths, through thermal energy, and we look at the sequencing of stars and black holes, and we look at do Doppler shift, and we look at the bit of cosmology as well. So we really take you across the surface of it, but it really hopefully inspires you to uh, look at it as a, fire, as a degree choice. With nuclear physics, it, I, it, it's a nice ending to the course because it ties up the whole of the atomic work you've done before. It ties up particles and it looks at how fission and fusion are just one part of that story but it finishes the story very nicely indeed. OK, um, then the assessments. There are 100% uh, exams. There are three exam papers and we have sort of um, shorter answer questions and we have multiple choice questions. So the um, the shorter answer questions, we might have six parts to it that maybe make up to maybe 12 or 13 marks. The multiple choice is a skill we teach separately and you can get very good marks out of multiple choices if you learn the skill and we teach that as a separate thing. But multiple choices in physics exams are really extensive. They will test your knowledge completely. And then in terms of practicals, AQA introduced a CPAC. Now what that is, universities complain bitterly about not having um, the students coming into university, their lab, but they didn't know how to use a micrometer. They have no idea. So we actually now, our required practicals are marked and your skill level is measured. And at the end of the two years, you will be given um, a certificate. On your certificate will be whether you failed, passed or failed the practical element of the course, which is huge in terms of the science itself. OK. Um, the course requirements um, and you've got the basics to get into the college, which are at least two grade sixes. But in terms of physics, 
physics six, math seven, physics seven, math six, either way round. But actually, quite a lot of our students get beyond that point. So aim very high, everybody. The things that you must realise when you join um, Solihull Sixth Form is you will do a maths A level alongside your physics A level. It's a cyst subject. It has to be done at the same time. And we, because we use parts of maths, maths is a tool for physics. We join them together. So the two A levels, at least the two A levels you are doing are maths and physics. And you might put further maths with that. You could put a science with that. And we get lots of different options for that third subject to go alongside it. OK, now for some BAFTA award winning performances from myself and Brendan. Um, I think um, we're, we're, we're waiting for the Oscar, but we we'll, we'll ha might have to wait a little bit longer for that. Um, this is a video we put together. Please enjoy. And as it says, um, ask as many questions as you can. Hi everyone, my name's Rick. This is the physics lab. This is my physics lab. Come with me, please. This is lab 112. This is where I will be teaching. Come in. And what you're going to see first is going to be demonstrated by Brendan. Hi, come on over. Come on over. Yeah, great to see you. Great to see you. Okay, so uh, I'm Brendan Foster. I'm the other half of the physics team here at the Sony House Sixth Form College. Physics sometimes looks a bit like magic. It's great. We love it. Okay, so uh, first demo of the day. What have we got? Magnets. Everyone loves magnets. Okay, it wouldn't be physics without a few magnets. And of course, magnets, paper clips. There we go. Okay, but here's an interesting thing. Aluminium is not magnetic. Or is it? Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use an alternating current. An alternating current and a electromagnet here. And wow, look at that. Let's do that again. Let's see that again. There it is. Aluminium reacts into a magnetic field. That's kind of weird. Let's see what happens when we use a ring with a split in it. What do you think? Suits me? Nah, don't think so. Drop it on. Oh. Is it still working? Is it yeah, definitely still on? Let's try the other one. Yeah. Wow. Physics is absolutely fantastic. Right. Over to Rick. Guys, OK, let's talk about motion this time. So Sam, you come with me here. OK, I'm going to put on one of our air, air tracks here. And we're going to look at coming nice and close. We're going to look at two trolleys and we're going to look at momentum, the conservation of momentum. So we've got a light trolley, we've got a heavy trolley. Look what happens when they do an inelastic collision. But we don't just do that, we want to record it as well. So we go onto this screen over here, right onto this screen. Have a look at this. We've got a heavy trolley and a light trolley, and this is what happens when they go apart. So we've got a huge difference between the velocities. This is conservation of momentum, all to do with the amount of mass before and after. The law says, let's do this again. The law comes in and it pushes A away much faster. We examine all of those conditions, all of the elastic and the inelastic one where they stick together. Okay, brilliant. Go for it. Again, right, okay. Let's have a look at this. So, waves, waves are great. Okay, you've got a bit of those in your GCSE, but we're looking at standing waves. Okay, so, important question how do you make a standing wave? You take away the chairs. OK, so I'm going to make a standing wave today, though, with a vibration generator. OK, right. Um, coming in nice and close and have a look at this. This is a node, a position where the string is just not moving. Now, over here, let's oh, get a white paper. Hopefully that's a bit better for you. But have a look over here. This is an anti-node where it moves all over the place. So this currently is set up for the second harmonic. I can increase the frequency and there we go. Bring it about 900. There we go. Look at that. That is the third harmonic. OK, now very important in when we are doing our physics is we use oscilloscopes. We love our oscilloscopes. So come on and have a look at this at the screen. And can you see there? There is our wave on the oscilloscope and we can read from there to there a full time period and from that as you already know from your GCSE 
you can find the frequency and we'll be teaching you all about how to use oscilloscopes when you come and join us next year. Back to you, Rick. Okay, right. Now, what we're talking about here, we look at, look, come really nice and close. We're looking at this. This is a pendulum. And what we're going to do, we're going to look at the energy. The energy that's involved in a pen, pendulum creates a certain type of movement. We call that simple harmonic motion. So what we're going to do, we're going to lift the pendulum up here. This gives us gravitational potential energy. This is the energy we're going to give to the pen, pendulum. We're then going to do the same thing. We're going to record it on this screen. So we press the go button. Here we go. And now we're going to record it. And you can see that as it swings from right to left, forces are basically taking it back to the center. And you can see that it produces a sine wave. Mathematics we use a lot to basically take us into this shape. The shape is diminishing, and this is because of the friction lost in the pulley. So this is demonstrating energy through maths and through move movement. We also do the same thing with springs. We examine resonance, we examine harmonic motion, and we look at it all in terms of the mathematics and the graphs and the energy. Right, part two, come with me. Okay. Now, I'll take it from here. Come on, go this way, I'll show you my lab. Okay, so we've got two labs here. 112, you've just seen. This is 113. Okay, I'll quick look around. I'm just gonna run around this desk here. Okay. Come on over, I've got something else to show you. Right, high voltage. We love high voltage. You have to be careful with it though, otherwise you'll get a nasty little tickle from it. Okay, so um, this is a gold leaf electroscope. Now watch, I charge it, Oop, up it pops, and I can discharge it. There we go. Oh, I'm a little bit too. There we go, up oh, it goes. Right. Um, yeah, more interestingly though, I can actually, there we go, that should earth uh, properly, there we go. Oh my rubber shoes, that's, that's not working. Okay, so, this is the interesting bit. Einstein found this out. This is the photoelectric effect. I've got a UV lamp, Suntan anyone? And what happens? The UV light discharges it. You're not touching. The UV light discharges it. Let's see that again. Oop, it goes, and then ultraviolet light discharges it. Very, very interesting. But the most fascinating bit about it is, is look, I've got visible light over here. There we go. And what happens? Wow, nothing doesn't actually do it. This is quantum physics. We learned about this in the first year. Fascinating stuff. Back to Rick. Guys, let's get nuclear physics. Come this way. A momentous experiment done by Rutherford to basically say what's inside an atom. How on earth do we find out what's inside an atom? What we have to do is we have to fire what's called alpha particles, which are going to be helium nuclide. We fire them at a gold atom. But if you come a little bit closer here, is the gold atom is electrically positively charged. The alpha particles are positively charged. So it has to go up the hill to get close to it. Otherwise, it will be repelled. So what they did, they decided to put together a gold leaf and we are going to demonstrate exactly what happens to the alpha particles as they get close. And this is what we do. So we give the alpha particles a little bit of kinetic energy and we fire them. And now we have a track and these tracks are identical to the tracks that were seen by Rutherford when he did his experiment. Let's change the angle a little bit oh look at that one that's a beauty this has come straight back this demonstrates that what's in the center not only is the same charge and repels but it's extremely heavy and therefore there must be something really small and really tiny in the middle let's do one more there we go i can't pick that up i'm not going to try what this is demonstrating is atoms have mainly space and a small center, positively charged and very heavy. That is the nucleus. And what you see is what Rutherford saw. Okay, Brendan, go for it. 
Okay, come on over, come on over. Wow, electrons, electrons are great. This is a cathode ray tube. And what we've got here um, in this little electron gun here, we are accelerating electrons with 3000 volts, accelerating them across this space. Now the only reason you can see them, they're so small, the only reason you can see them is they're interacting with a phosphor screen. Now, interesting, what can we do with these? Well, we can deflect them. What can we deflect them with? We can deflect them with a electric field. Okay, so another high voltage, going to that plate at the top, plate at the bottom, and let's just dial that up a little bit, and what happens? Ah, look, they can be deflected. But then you'd be saying electrons, electric field. Well, of course, but what else can we use? We can also use a magnetic field. I get a really good close look at this. Watch that compass. I'm going to turn it on, and there we go. We have got a magnetic field. These coils are generating a magnetic field for us. And have a look what's happened to those electrons. Let's just turn that magnetic field down a little bit. There we go. Magnetic fields can also deflect electrons. So this is year two, electromagnetism. Um, another one of our absolutely fascinating, just physics is pure magic, it's great stuff. Right, back to it. Okay, now we remain in electromagnetism here. This is year two, but the father of electricity, Michael Faraday decided that he wanted to basically come from the history of electricity was only from batteries and chemistry. He knew something, come a little bit closer, he knew something about copper, he knew that metal, when it was pushed inside a huge magnetic field, which is this one, these are horseshoe magnets and they're very, very strong. He knew that when it was pushed in, it moved the electrons just like the chemistry, it was moving electrons doing work on them. And he said, well, if I produce the disc, I am producing spokes, basically spokes of electrons that are cutting the magnetic flux and they cut them at right angles. And the result, if you look on this very sensitive ammeter here, is as I turn it, you get an incredible amount of current. Yes, it's very small, but once you, this is essentially a generator. So Michael Faraday said, OK, battery does this. I can produce the same electricity if I turn a disc within a magnetic field. That's a turbine. That's a steam turbine. That's a dynamo. That's how we get our electricity from today onwards. OK, and guys, that's it for the video. OK, guys, uh, so I, I hope you enjoyed that. That's just a little bit of that's the sort of way that we would teach uh, in our lessons. Uh, and it, it really is. That's that's what we do. Um, and uh, so, we, we, you know, as we've said at the beginning, we are specialists with degrees. And so we know our subject very, very well. Um, but we are very, very blessed at the college because we don't just have one oscilloscope um, for 20. We have 20. And we could essentially, in some cases, use one each if we required that. Um, and we've just also used the teams you're looking at now in terms of uh, watching this. We use teams to do our teaching with. So you are a member of the team. You can then communicate with us quite often out of hours and send us questions. We will answer those questions. You will also. Um, do your work on teams as well which i'll come to in an, in a minute and you we will see that work via teams um in terms of the career links i mentioned earlier that we look at engineering for example and how it's linked um we will actually get we we tell you about the opportunities to actually study physics academically but also what on earth do you do with it and the 127 types of engineering um, we aim very high here. Um, I think you might think, oh, it's a state six, six form and maybe we don't try as hard as maybe some of the independent schools. Um, we do and we get students into these top universities. Um, a few years ago, Amelia got into um, Oxford to do engineering and, and, and she is a part of a group that got to very high destinations. So we aim very, very high here. We also have people coming in to talk about the engineering you or the physics you've just studied. And we have um, a couple of young engineers coming to talk about civil engineering, for example, 
and the fact that building uh, railways in Birmingham or buildings in uh, Southeast Asia, um, they talk about world civil engineering and all the links with physics that has, but in the actual industry, what degree did they take? And what have they done with it as a job? We have an automotive engineering student, used to be an engineering student, now he works at Aston Martin and he designed the external um, of the, the Aston Martin for Spec Spectre. He doesn't think much of it, um, but it, he's a design engineer and he works with a team of other engineers at Aston Martin. We talk, he comes and talks about his experiences, the, the how uh, other engineers work with each other. Um, we've also got a great contact, a great friend of ours, which is Nigel Watson, Professor Nigel Watson from University of Birmingham. He also works at the Large Hadron Collider in CERN. He's part of that team and he will tell you about university life as well as the study of matter and where they are. We also have entries for the British Physics Olympiad. So we're again, we're aiming quite high here, um, uh, extended problem solving. And we also, because of our alumni, because of our relationship with our students, we call them back in from their first year of physics or engineering to come and talk to our year 12s and 13s about the, enge the engineering and the, the study that they're doing. OK, I'm going to move on because we're going to run out of time very shortly. This is one, one of the books that we, we want you to buy. It's to spec. It's very beautifully written. It's part of our BIOSH system, which is where we tell you which questions that we, we categorize our questions. We give you A4 paper, we give you a refill, basically um, folders for you to put it in. We organize you and we tell you what work we expect you to do outside of lessons. OK, um, these are some of the enrichments that was as I was talking about. And uh, this is just a snapshot of one of the weeks. There are many others that come in. I'm going to go through a little faster because we're running out of time. Um, we don't need that one. And finally, um, this is some of the destinations we go to. We're very keen to tell you where you're going to end up having done this subject. So now, final questions. Over to you, Brendan. OK, lovely. Thanks, Rick. OK, so um, so just a, a few little bits for me there. So we've had some lovely questions. Um, so just a, a big shout out for uh, thank you for asking those questions. I hope the answers that I've given you in the chat um, were um, sort of up to expectations. I have just had one last minute entry. How would you know where to look for A-level requirements under different universities? For that, I would recommend the UCAS website. It's yeah. really, really good. Um, massively updated in recent years. It's it's really brilliant. Um, have a really good look around that. Um, it tells you all of the courses that are available and there are literally hundreds if not into the thousands of different types of courses that center on physics and engineering. Um, quick little sort of um, thing about, um, we had a question about do you have to take maths? Absolutely. Um, if you are wanting to do any kind of physics or engineering course after, um, after your A-levels, you will need maths. Unfortunately, it is on all of the universities. They need you to have the maths A level. Um, so, um, but the third choice, well, what could your third choice be? A lot of students feel that they, they should do a science. They should do something like computer science or chemistry. Those are perfectly good, very uh, strong choices to make. However, don't be shy about going in a little more creative route. We have a number of students who go to more of the art route. Uh, we've got a, a, a lovely uh, young lady in one of my classes who's looking towards architecture, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, OK, so, um, oh, yeah, uh, Rick is uh, keen to uh, to remind you all that um, if you are looking towards a more pure um, sort of physics and maths route, Further maths as well as maths and physics is um, a lovely option as well. OK, so um, whether you um, specialise or diversify, absolutely up to you. Um, yeah, we love our Great. practical work. 
Um, goodness, we are pretty much running out of time though, so um, I shall um, have to sign off and say really do look forward to seeing all of you in person very soon. Um, so I'll just briefly pass you back to, uh, to Rick for the final send off. OK, thanks, uh, Brendan. Um, yeah, just I hope you, you you just given a snapshot of what we're about here, um, what we look at, not only the sub the subject, but what where we take you beyond the subject. And our goals are very high, our aspirations are high, but also the journey. You're on a journey here. You start with us and the energy that we put into where you're going will hopefully inspire you with your choices of not just engineering, but any types of subjects that, that get you from the A-level. A-level physics is a problem solving. It is one of the hardest um, that you'll do, but the rewards that you get are immense and it's worth every single second that you put in. And we make that journey as comfortable as we possibly can. OK, guys, thanks very much for tuning in. Um, good night from me and Brendan. This is News at 10. Thank you.